morning session on dependent origination. Yesterday I stopped after greed for fine material existence. When somebody meditates, then uh, comes to understanding that even fine material existence is gross. So that person wants to be even exist in a subtle state. Whether that person may not experience uh, any uh, anything that disturbs the mind. So the person practice more uh, med meditation and then gain the uh, immaterial existence. For that, the person, that, that attainment is very, very refined. Uh, that may be called the, the last stage of the finest, last stage of uh, uh, existence in a living being and therefore the person desires for attaining that state. Uh, that is a desire. The, but it is a because even then is not secure. That's not permanent. <coughs> if, uh, that individual may live in the state for many, many, many uh, years and eons. And many years or eon is the limit. If you can put a number, so and so can live so many years, so many years, and so forth. Putting number shows that it has a limit. Number in space, number in time shows the limit. Once the person hits the limit, then the person cannot go beyond that and then comes down, down to lower realms. Uh, human. Sometimes uh, if the person has been mindful at one stage or another, that person may commit uh, unwholesome thing. Unmindfulness, the Buddha said mindfulness is the path to liberation. Unmindfulness is the path to downfall, lost, lower state of existence. He put it in a stronger term. Appamato amata padang, pamato machuno padang. Appamata nemi anti yepamata yatamata. Appamada mindfulness doesn't die. Unmindfulness is dead already. The uh, mindfulness is go to uh, liberation, uh, amata padang. Unmindfulness is uh, the path to death. Mindful doesn't die. Unmindful is dead already. That means when one is unmindful, the, the flood of defilements open to him or her. No matter how high the person attains, uh, so long as uh, ignorance is there, existence is there, individual will meet impermanence and then will come down to another level of existence. So this is desirable in a certain way, but not desirable in the terms of attaining liberation. So, however, because of ignorance, that person compared to all other state of existence, thinks that this is the best existence. That is, that is a stumbling block for attaining total liberation. 
then conceit means uh, uh, I am conceit. The conceit actually is uh, overcome previously. Uh, the gross form, this is a very subtle form of conceit called asmimana. All other upper uh, lower hindrances, uh, fetus are destroyed when one attains the never eternal state, anagami state. And yet, the person is not fully enlightened because this very powerful fetus stays in a very subtle way. It is hidden. Uh, it is not that easy to find. Just like this, this coronavirus, <laughs> not in a bad sense, uh, it will not uh, uh, be so clear to the person, but it, it is hidden somewhere in the mind. Until that part is over, that person will not attain full enlightenment. This very tiny uh, part of the state of mind exists high, hidden somewhere because of the presence of ignorance. On the one hand, they support ignorance and ignorance support on the other hand for them. So these are uh, mutually supporting mental factors. So as long as this is there, there will be no liber total liberation. I think I mentioned in a earlier discussion that uh, Venerable Khemaka, who had attained the third level of enlightenment, overcoming five heavy fat uh, fetters, and yet he had this uh, uh, lingering uh, feeling of I. Only when he developed knowledge of impermanence and perfected the awareness of impermanence, then this notion of uh, I, I am disappeared. This is exactly what the Buddha said in uh, Nikaya, uh, Anicca Sanya Sutta, Anicca Sanya Sutta. Anicca Sanya Sutta gives uh, 10 similes. One of them is the, uh, the sun rising. When in autumn, when the trees don't have leaves, and the sky is blue and sun rises, then it dispels every little bit of dark, every shade. It dispels and the light brings to the earth, at least to the main part, some part of the earth. And there, uh, no shade of darkness remains. Similarly, when mind, mindfulness of impermanence is perfect, every shade of doubt every shade of uh, conceit completely vanished from his or her mind. And therefore it is so powerful practice. So when Vendaba came again, so impermanent, while he's explaining uh, how he uh, saw this uh, conceit, I conceit, and as he was explaining the power of impermanence, as he saw it very clearly, his uh, notion of I ness, I ness, I am, slowly faded away like uh, soap dissolves in water, faded away, disappeared and he attained full enlightenment together with those who were listening to him. So this is the eighth uh, theta. There are two more I will discuss after this uh, morning meditation session. So let us uh, focus the mind on metta Uta. I 
make it a little bigger. All right. Let us be our meta practice. May all beings be and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, such or gross, visible or invisible, live or far, born or coming to birth. May all beings have happy minds, let no one deceive another, nor despise any anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will should anyone be harmed to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart, one should cultivate for all the world the heart of boundless love and friendliness. Above the law and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely doing here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desires for sensual pleasures. One comes again to the womb. With this very noble, pure mental state, we are in a very good position to share metta with all living beings. Buddha mentioned even if we cultivate metta, even for a fraction of a second, we the mind at that moment is so pure and clean that uh, it, it helps the uh, one to attain jhanas and even to cultivate factors of enlightenment. Uh, monks and nuns who practice this even for a fraction of a second making the mind very pure and clean, will be totally free from their indebtedness to people who support them by providing food, lodging, robes, and medicine. It is that powerful. With that powerful state of mind, we can wish all beings to be free from pain and suffering, especially those who are now undergoing enormous amount of pain and suffering due to this virus. With this wonderful metta thought, we let us begin to focus our mind on our breathing. We mentioned Buddha mentioned many times that we have to focus the mind in the present moment. The present moment we find in breathing, which is going on all the time. So pay attention to the breath and be aware of inhaling as inhaling, exhaling as exhaling, and also become aware of the inhaling and exhaling and the pause between them. And then you feel the breath, you perceive the breath, pay attention to the breath deliberately and be conscious of the breath. This in 
these are five aggregates in nutshell feeling perception thought and consciousness together with the breath and then gradually our body becomes relaxed the breath becomes relaxed the mind becomes relaxed when these three segments are relaxed our hindrances such as greed resentment restlessness and worry sleepiness and drowsiness and doubt fade away when they fade away our mind becomes very calm relaxed and peaceful and then uh, our mind let go of any unwholesome things arising in the mind then we also develop to begin to feel the true impact of metta and then we see how compassion joins the metta and then joy arises happiness arises and gain concentration this will happen gradually not very quickly only if we do not verbalize or conceptualize and simply pay total mindful attention mindful attention is the attention without greed hatred and delusion mindful attention also means knowing the root of wholesome mental state and unwholesome mental state and no roots of unwholesome mental states are greed hatred and delusion roots of wholesome mental states are non greed non hatred non delusion and we see them growing in our mind with this awareness we gain concentration when we gain concentration our deepest subtlest changes become clear to us and we stay being aware of them suffering be free from suffering may the fear struck be free from fear may the grieving be free from grief so to may all beings be this is our everyday wish since there are many suffering and because of that there are sorrow lamentation pain grief and despair also there is fear we want to wish all of them to be free from suffering anxiety fear and relief from their suffering and return to their regular life live long in good health also those who are also supporting them in many ways doctors nurses their helpers hospitals other workers 
those who are financially supporting, spiritually supporting, social workers, and so forth, whoever even wish them to be free from this disease, may all of them without any exception be free from suffering and attain liberation. With this very sincere metta wish, let me continue our morning session. We said last two fetters the restlessness and ignorance. Restlessness, somebody might wonder how come a person who has overcome lower fetters and ready to overcome all the remaining fetters can have uh, restlessness. Ordinarily, restlessness arises in people who have been doing wrong things, who are worrying about their jobs and many, many mundane things. But the person who has reached this stage, people think might not have restlessness at all. Well, the kind of restlessness this individual who has reached this stage uh, is his enthusiasm in attaining liberation. He build up momentum gradually with great effort, mindfulness, concentration, dedication, perseverance, following all the factors of enlightenment, mindfulness, investigation, energy, relaxing, uh, joy, concentration and equanimity, overcoming defilements, many defilements, the person has reached this very last final stage. Just imagine when you are competing in a, a running a contest, there are many people running along with you, you want to reach the goal. As you are getting close to the goal, you use every little ounce of energy you have to reach the goal. Similarly, this individual, not in that gross way, mentally he is so prepared, so ready, and the goal is within sight and he wants to attain it, gain it very quickly without wasting even a second. This kind of enthusiasm in a very subtle way is expressed as restlessness. There is no other kind of restlessness. And that is supported, this supports ignorance and it is supported by ignorance. And therefore, ignorance is running through all alone from the first fetter to the last. And then the last is to get rid of ignorance. That is very systematic, logical. All alone ignorance was supporting them. They were supporting ignorance. Now, finally, ignorance is there as a last fetter. When this individual's awareness of impermanence is 100% clear, without any shade of doubt, that 
he in this individual will see every bit of his body every cell every molecule every atom everything in the body every perception every feeling every thought and every moment of consciousness is in a real state of flux changing never having any moment of rest so his notion of self totally vanished conceit totally vanished no doubt in his mind at all and wisdom blossoms uh, reach its uh, climax the top beyond that there is nothing so he overcomes his last bit of ignorance and that is the uh, way how ignorance leaves the mind without leaving any shade of doubt <clears throat> everything is 100% clear that is how that person can say usitam brahmacharyam khatam karaneyam na parangittattaya natti jan dati punab bhavo usitam brahmacharyam i have lived the holy life what is the holy life holy life is the life of following the noble eightfold path noble eightfold path is called holy life itself whoever follows this that person is living a holy life pure life so he can say usitam brahmacharyam katang karaniyam brahmacharya in other words is the purest highest way of life living that anybody can achieve by following the noble eightfold path that person doesn't have to be a monk or nun any person who follows the noble eightfold path very scrupulously mindfully that person can reach this level and can conclude and say with 100% confidence i have lived the holy life khatang karaniyam i have done what was to be done na parangittatta there is no more for left for me to do that means the person so everything that he is supposed to do to attain this level he has attained that he practiced that completed and this is the way how a person knows that there will no longer be any future lives for that person that means attaining enlightenment or nibbana he attained that is friends <coughs> attaining nibbana uh, does not mean going from one place to another uh, some realm existing somewhere outside this five aggregate nibbana is achieved in this five aggregates within this life so that is what he attained and that is how we end his uh, uh, five, uh, seven, uh, ten fetters now ignorance uh, also this is one part i mentioned i have not finished uh, explanation of ignorance ignorance uh, going back to ignorance uh, may 
makes us blind to the two five uh, very important knowledges. Jnana. Number one is called Vipassana Jnana. The knowledge of rising and for Vipassana Jnana is nothing but seeing rising and falling. Ignorance does not permit us to see this reality. All day long, all life long, we live going through rising and falling, but we do not see that because our eyes are focusing on outside, ears are focusing on outside, nose from to outside projected, tongue goes to outside, body goes to outside, and the mind goes to outside. Uh, so, until we uh, return to ourselves, we cannot see this reality. There is a very little uh, folk tale I had to tell you. I think I mentioned it in many places. <clears throat> uh, it's a, it's, it's a, like a fairy tale, but it conveys the message. There was a deity who was to hide a secret from human beings. He thought of hiding it in, on the top of uh, Mount Everest. Then he thought maybe one day these human beings may discover it. They might climb Mount Everest and find it. Then he thought, no, no, this is not the good place. Then let me hide it in the bottom of the deepest place in the sea. And then again, he thought, well, yet even that they might find out. Then he thought of hiding in the very remote cave. Again, he thought, he might, human beings are so curious, so inquisitive, uh, adventurous, they might find it, find this secret. Then he thought, well, the one place they will never find the secret is in their own, is the, in their, is the mind. So let me hide it in their mind. So they will never find it. This is the secret that we all don't see, don't find. We all have it, but we are so extroverted, looking outside and do not look inside. This meditation, translated into English as insight meditation, actually it should be inside, inside, because we don't, we, we want to develop our uh, inner awareness of what really is there for us to get, to, to us to uh, find out. And what really is there that makes us unhappy and bring sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. It is because of this causal relationship, the suffering does not come to us from outside, nor does it create, nor is it created by somebody. No, I create it, but it happens due to causes and conditions. That is the law of dependent origination. So seeing this rising and falling is hidden in us and we don't see that because of our deeply rooted ignorance. Second knowledge that we, that uh, ignorance uh, blocks from us is the knowledge of uh, 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 ownership of uh, uh, karma. That's called karma sakata samaditi, right? understanding of the fact that karma is ours. 
karma is ours. Uh, we will discuss this under uh, Sankara when it comes to Sankara. But uh, uh, ignorance uh, always blocks our understanding of the ownership of karma. Uh, it is called Kamma uh, Sagata Amma Samaditi, right understanding of uh, that we are, uh, in, we are, we inherited Kamma, or our belonging, our property is Kamma. Third knowledge that ignorance blocks us is the, the knowledge of the path, uh, path to liberation. Because so many things are in our way, they are red herrings there, and we have so much papanches uh, that is uh, uh, mental proliferations. As I mentioned some time ago, there are two kinds of proliferations. Physical pro proliferation is the proliferation that we keep growing, 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 multiplying, multiplying ourselves. And the mental proliferation is multiplying our thoughts, thinking, countless, we cannot count the amount of thinking we have. And this all kind of thinking uh, will uh, uh, block our clear seeing of the path and that uh, uh, they proliferate because underlying all of them is ignorance. We mentioned underlying uh, all, all, all our uh, influxes have ignorance as underlying tendency and uh, um, among underlying tendencies, ignorance is there in uh, 10 fetters last is ignorance. So ignorance is so powerful, difficult to get rid of. And therefore, it always blocks our understanding of or knowledge of the right path. And the <clears throat> fourth knowledge that is blocked by ignorance is the path of fruition. Of course, once we achieve the path, then uh, the, we will not return without attaining the fusion, without gaining the goal of that path. And even that can be blocked by uh, this, uh, uh, what you call ignorance. And uh, the last knowledge is uh, knowledge of reflection, uh, Sampajanya. Uh, clear comprehension, understanding, or uh, returning to our own activities to see, uh, or to review, uh, or reflect. That's called Yoniso Manasikara, uh, reflection on the activities, thoughts, and deeds, how they originate, how they proliferate to bring us suffering. These are the kind of knowledges that are blocked by ignorance. Now, I want to uh, continue this uh, tomorrow and uh, <clears throat> once again, I want to uh, repeat the announcement that I made this morning. Some of you are not there. That is, uh, uh, Vendaba Sandhaji will uh, conduct the uh, evening sessions from now on uh, at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, if somebody wants to uh, observe uh, Uposatha. Many people like to observe Uposatha, taking Uposatha precepts. Today is uh, Uposatha day, new moon day. And if anybody likes to observe 
the eight precepts. Today is the, uh, the day for that. And with this, I want to uh, conclude this morning session. And once again, I want to wish everybody peace, happiness, solace, and comfort, and attain, uh, be free from the suffering, and attain to everlasting peace, Nibbana. And see you this evening, and good day.